Hi, welcome back to this lecture again. Uh, so another um, another uh, particle uh, or sulfur dioxide uh, 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 pollutant uh, that we are interested to map using satellite data. Uh, so sulfur dioxide, what's the basic? So this is the EPA website. So sulfur dioxide, um, uh, you know, can be generated in in the air uh, due to mostly burning of you know fossil fuel. Um, and also some industrial just power plants and sometimes it can also um, uh, come from like ships or you know vehicles and things like that especially if they burn uh, you know fuel in a higher concentration and the health impact of uh, sulfur dioxide um, really is that if you in if you inhale or breathe an air that's uh, contaminated with sulfur dioxide it might, uh, you know, harm your respiratory system, especially people with, you know, asthma, um, and, and in particular children uh, are really uh, affected, or the, the health of, you know, uh, children or people with asthma might be highly impacted with uh, sulfur um, breathing and air that's contaminated um, or high concentration of sulfur dioxide. So, you know, mapping and quantifying sulfur dioxide in the air um, in the location and timing where, where, when and where it's found is really key or important to quantify the, the health risk or the, the health impact of sulfur dioxide. So we'll be looking at, um, again, the Sentinel s s satellite sensor uh, to map sulfur dioxide, okay? So as always, I like to import the, um, you know, country's database here, uh, which is an already existing one, and also import the image collection, which is SO2 sulfur uh, dioxide image collection, and specifically I'll select the uh, column number density data uh, layer, um, and this is a time series data, so I'll focus or filter by date, Again, I'll use um, the first um, week of June 2019, uh, as you can see here, June 1st to June 11, and um, I'll uh, create some visualization parameter, uh, mostly yellow and red, high concentration of sulfur dioxide, and finally, um, uh, cast the image collection here, which I already defined here, and because it's a time series, I'll generate a single image out of this image collection, which means for every pixel I have, I'll calculate the mean value for the entire uh, you know, week, which means June 1 to June 11. And I'll clip it by country's database. And finally import the visualization parameter, which I already created. And I'll also um, name my layer uh, here as O2 sulfur dioxide. And let me execute my script. Okay, excellent. So I will have my uh, sulfur dioxide map here uh, shortly. It's loading. Uh, so let's see. Okay, perfect. So as you can see here, uh, you know, blue and black are pretty much low concentration of you know, sulfur dioxide, whereas red and um, yellow are uh, high concentration of uh, sulfur dioxide. Um, so as you can see here, some part of Southern Africa, pretty much high concentration of sulfur dioxide. And most of Africa is um, pretty much low concentration, as you can see here for this period, 2019. Uh, and some part of, uh, it's loading here, some part of, um, you know, Middle East, uh, most of Middle East is low concentration, but, you know, the eastern part of Middle East, uh, high concentration, uh, you know, most of India, except a few hotspots, and then most of China, even um, a few hotspots, and some part of Northern Europe has, you know, higher concentration, and some part of Russia, and things like that. Let's look at the United States uh, for this period. Um, as you can see here, most of the United States uh, pretty pretty much um, okay or low concentration of sulfur dioxide and some part of Canada um, uh, higher concentration actually here uh, in, in, in Canada so that's how you know a demonstration on how to 
show you how you can access uh, sulfur dioxide data from a Sentinel satellite uh, and then um, deploying it in uh, the Erzingen API.